Um, first of all, let me welcome you all uh, to uh, Sunday of Art and Code. I'm really, really delighted that you all can come here. Uh, this is a conference, as you know, on uh, programming toolkits or environments for artists, young people, and the rest of us. Um, it's about democratizing the education of programming, particularly for people with uh, art and design sensibilities and musical sensibilities as well, to, to a certain extent. Um, and it's really about how programming is becoming something that we can all do. Uh, and that uh, not only that, that we, we should all do, we probably have reasons to do. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I'm, I'm, I've, I've made a, a brief 15 minute uh, introductory slide presentation. Maybe I can keep it to 10 and keep things really nice and schedule. Um, and so first I'd like to begin with a quick, a couple of slides to look at that I think are kind of interesting and sort of funny. Um, this, one is, um, this one is a letter. <laughs> Uh, okay, this guy Chuck Suri, I'm not sure if you know him, he's a really, really uh, significant and, and early computer artist. He's one of the first computer artists. Uh, him and, and probably about uh, 15 other people were like the first people to use computers to make art, starting in the mid-60s. And uh, so this fellow, um, uh, Matthew Bagel, uh, wanted to write uh, an article about Chuck Suri for Art Forum in 1967 and proposed having a... a uh, uh, special issue on electronics and computers in art in art form. And the, the editor from Art Form wrote back, Dear Mr. Bakel, thank you for the enclosed manuscript on Chuck Story. I can't imagine Art Form ever doing a special issue on electronics or computers in art, but one never knows. <laughs> in any event, thanks for letting us see the manuscript. They still haven't. Okay. So, so this, this is one dimension of, of, of sort of you know this perspective from the arts of like what's there's no role for computers. The second thing I'd like to show you, exhibit B, if you will, is um <laughs> This is a, uh, a popular site for obtaining software for a uh, significant mobile device. Uh, and, uh, and you'll notice you got all kinds of, of, of software there. You can get software, productivity software, uh, you can get finance software, you can get sports, travel, utilities, weather software, you can get entertainment software. But there's a category that's missing, art. <laughs> Okay, and if you were interested in making art for a device like this one, uh, and you know, and you wanted to sell it or give it away, the question is where where would it go uh, in this? And that's a real puzzle. So it seems like there's a notion from the software convention, even today, right? This is a screenshot I took last week that, uh, that there's no place for art in, in software either. So I think there's a kind of a mutual understanding uh, that spans multiple decades, and um, uh, doesn't really see that these things go together. But of course they do, and many of you here uh, are people who are artists who write software. Um, but yet there's a, there's a problem, and we we're faced with a, a really significant challenge. Um, these are more or less the same data, just plotted in two different ways. The New York Times has a slightly nicer looking one, uh, which is, uh, this is computer science listed as a probable major among incoming freshmen in college. Okay? So it, it pretty much, uh, it peaked for women in 1982, at 4.2 percent, and with women now it's down from 4.2 to 0 0.3 percent since 1982. Uh, not only that, but the gender gap between men and women has widened, and overall we've seen a precipitous plunge since, uh, let's say, 1999 or 2000, when it's just really just took a nosedive. And what can we, you know, obviously this is some kind of cultural pattern, right? This is not some kind of, this is not like linked to solar flares or something like that. This is, right? This is. <laughs> Right? This is linked to, to culture, and, and the question is, why is this happening, and what can we do to reverse these trends and get more people making software? Uh, I think, actually, that, that um, I, I, have, I hypothesize that the, the reason these two things are happening is they may actually have the same cause, which is that there's a, what you might call a, a lack of, a, a, or, or a slowness in acknowledging that uh, computation and culture actually are very, very deeply intermeshed and interrelated, and that uh, computation uh, influences culture, <coughs> enables culture, gives us new ways of communicating, uh, and um, that, uh, likewise, culture uh, sets an agenda for computation. Um, that, that culture, so what we want to do in order to communicate with each other, uh, then motivates and prompts the development of new kinds of computing tools. And so, uh, the question is, you know, then, what will work then? Uh, you know, how can we fix this? And I, I think that the part of the problem is that for most people in the world, software is something that someone else makes, not you, right? You just, you get, you know, you get this piece of office software, you get that piece of software from someone else, and you just, you're stuck with it, you've got to use it. You can't even really pimp it the way you pimp your cars, 
right? I mean, it's, it's like if, if you get a car, you can hot rod it, right? You know, some greasy guy who you know, doesn't even have a high school education can sort of take this car and make it into something totally unique, personal, beautiful, and functional in absolutely different ways. Whereas it's very challenging to do that with software. Um, you need some education. You need uh, you know a way of disseminating simply knowledge about what's possible. Uh, there's a lot of ways in which um, people who manufacture uh, computers that are then given to the public uh, could be a lot. It could make it a lot easier for you to pimp your software, for you to pimp your computer. Right? When you buy something like this, it does not come with a free software development environment on it. You know, um, uh, which I think is the point that, that Why the Lucky Stiff makes in his uh, in his little afterward for our. Uh, our program, the, the little coders predicament. So what we really want to do here is to improve software literacy. What is software literacy? I think for a long time people have thought, assumed that software literacy means uh, you know how to use uh, Excel, you know how to use business software, right? If you want to get a job, you have to know how to type 60 words per minute in Microsoft Word and you need to know how to uh, use a spreadsheet and so you can get a job in a cubicle somewhere. That's a different kind of literacy than what I'm talking about here. I, I'm going to quote from Marius Watts and, and, and say that uh, to use an analogy to, to writing, to, to, if you consider what it means to be a literate person in written English, let's say, right? it doesn't just mean that you can read traffic signs. It doesn't just mean that you can read. Right? It also means that you can write articulately. Okay? You can construct form thoughts and actually create your own sentences in English that you know, are novel, that haven't been written before, and put them out there, whether it's poetry or whether it's expository writing. And the analogy in software would be that you can not only know how to use software made by others, but that you could actually make software for yourself and for others. And that's, that's really what we're trying to get at here in this, uh, in this particular um, conference. Now, uh, computer science departments should not, and, and probably should not have the monopoly on, on, on teaching programming. The reason is because they're, they're not necessarily the best people for teaching programming to people with two completely different objectives than the discipline of computer science. So let's let's for the let's maybe for the first time tease apart programming as a skill that um, is, it should be an everyday skill, all right? Making software from computer science, which is a legitimate discipline full of interesting and hard problems that's best addressed by computer scientists. And say that for too long these two things have sort of coexisted in the same place, and programming is only taught by computer scientists, uh, probably to people like themselves. How do we break out of that, and how do we start teaching? computer science, not sorry, programming, excuse me, as a skill to everyday people, artists, and the rest of us. Um, so uh, I propose to you uh, the, the, uh, the sort of subtitle for my lecture here is FUBU. If you guys know, this is a hip-hop clothing line, for us, by us. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys today the FUBU collection, right? This is uh, the different software that you'll be seeing here today are 11 different environments, which to a greater or lesser extent are made for artists, by artists, uh, who are artists who are taking back uh, the medium of computation in order to provide it to other artists. Uh, we see this all over the place. And so uh, these uh, 11 different programming environments, some commercial, some uh, free uh, open source uh, environments, are intended for artists to be able to make art, and they're all different programming environments. And these particular 11 are the ones that there are others. There are many others, in fact. Uh, but these 11 are the ones that are the subject of our, of our conference uh, this weekend, in which we are, we are treated in various ways. So I want to emphasize a couple points. Uh, for posterity here. First, the significance of these tools is not theoretical. Right? These are not uh, research micro languages made, you know, by, uh, you know, shared with just a couple people and sort of used as a, as, as, you know, oh, I finished my PhD thesis. I guess I'll let that sort of fizzle out. Um, these are these are languages that have been adopted by and are, are continually widely used by uh, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people. So these are living languages, if you will, that that have big communities of use. Um, they are, and they substantially shaped the, line, the landscape of who's able to write software. And those people are people like us. They're artists, they're young people, and the rest of us. Um, so now, uh, these people can now write software to fulfill their own will to self-expression. And I think that's the really interesting objective here that, that uh, artists and children and the rest of us have, is fulfilling our will to self-expression, which is different than, you know, uh, producing productivity software. Very few people are going to be making their own office software. Um, very few people are going to be necessarily researching computer science problems. So what we're doing with this thing, we're being creative. Um, and these are the languages represented today uh, in this particular lecture series on this Sunday. Um, we've got uh, Alice, uh, presented by Don Slater. We have Pure Data, presented by Hans Christoph Steiner. We have Scratch, uh, presented by John Maloney and Evelyn Eastman. We've got Hackety Hack, presented by Why the Lucky Stiff. Uh, then we have uh, Lunch from 12 to 1. 
Uh, processing will be presented by Casey Reese and Ben Fry. Uh, Max MSP Jitter will be presented by Luke Dubois. Uh, and uh, depending on how you pronounce it, VVVV or uh, Fear Vow uh, is presented by uh, Sebastian Oshatz. Then we have cookies at 315. <laughs> uh, Extend script will be presented by Dr. Wuhu. Uh, Extend script is a really interesting language that he's uh, using to abuse Adobe products in very interesting ways. Um, open frameworks will be presented by Zachary Lieberman, Theo Watson, and Arturo Castro. And then the keynote presentation will be presented by Tom McMill from Microsoft Research, who we're really grateful to for sponsoring this entire event. Uh, and just one last comment. This is the first time that such a summit like this has been assembled. So there's a little bit of a, of a historic quality to this, this conference. And I just want to thank our, all, all of our sponsors. Uh, Microsoft Research uh, generously gave a grant uh, this first and overseen by the Carnegie Mellon Center for Computational Thinking. And this entire thing is managed by uh, myself and my wonderful colleagues uh, in the Studio for Creative Inquiry in the College of Fine Arts. Thank you very much. <laughs>